Hey everybody, let's talk Portuguese. Today's video is going to be all about the letter R in Portuguese. I've talked a lot about the letter R in Portuguese and how it's developed and evolved in different varieties of Portuguese, but that spread out into a bunch of different videos and I wanted to have one video where I talk about R as a general concept. So let's get started. Now, if you watch my videos or already speak Portuguese, then you are already well aware that R is a letter in Portuguese that is very complicated when it comes to the pronunciation because it's conditioned by where it occurs in a word or a phrase. This is the thing that makes Portuguese pronunciation so much more complicated when compared to other relatively straightforward languages like Italian or Spanish. Spanish does have some context dependency to the way it is pronounced, but not nearly to the same extent as Portuguese, and definitely not to the same extent when we're talking about the letter R. So when we're talking about the context dependency of how the letter R in Portuguese is pronounced, we're making a distinction between two possible articulations of that sound. Those are called soft R and hard R, or in Portuguese, erribrando or erifort. Soft R is the easiest of these R's, and it is perhaps the most common R sound that you'll encounter when you're studying major languages. That is the tapped R, or the R sound. If you're a speaker of American English, you already make that sound when you say words like butter. That double T in butter gets reduced to a D sound, and because it's between two vowels, you have a little tap, a R sound. Hard R in Portuguese is derived from the rolled R, which is a sound that many English speakers are incapable of pronouncing because of the nature of our R. That is a R sound, but as we will get to later in this video, the actual sound of hard R in Portuguese is usually very different. That rolled R is characteristic of strikingly few accents in Portuguese today. But first, let's talk a little bit about the conditions in which we hear soft or hard R. As with Spanish and other Romance languages, the general rule of thumb in Portuguese is that the hard R comes at the beginning of a word. The soft Soft R, generally speaking, comes in the middle of a word. So, for example, you would have ratu with the hard R at the beginning of the word, but you would have caru with the soft R in the middle of the word. There are even some differences between Portugal and Brazil in which R is made hard and which stays soft. By and large, the R in Portugal has retained the soft R pronunciation in more places than in Brazil. This includes at the end of words such as verbs in their infinitive form like comer with the R sound, but it also includes R that comes before other consonants. So in Portugal, you have part. You hear the R sound before the T. In most cases, an R that comes after a consonant is also soft. So you have examples like preto. The main exception to this is when that consonant sound coming before the R is a nasal sound or is a voiced fricative. So for example, we have words pronounced like Israel or Genru. Up to here, things are pretty straightforward. Once you know the basic rules, you understand how to pronounce R in pretty much any position in Portuguese. Now, this applies to European Portuguese. Most of these rules also apply to Brazilian Portuguese, except that Brazilian Portuguese has a greater tendency to pronounce the hard R. The hard R in Brazilian Portuguese is so pervasive that the hard R is the default R at the end of words and before other consonants. This can vary by accent in Brazil as well. The hard R before consonants and at the end of words is characteristic of Rio, the Northeast, and the North, as well as many regions of the interior, but in the case of São Paulo and the South, you would hear a soft R before consonants, and often at the end of words as well. Someone with a hard R would say the word Porto like Porto. And in the case of accents that have the hard R at the end of words, and even in some cases where that has not historically been the case, the presence of the hard R in Brazilian Portuguese at the end of words has led, in fact, to the dropping of the R at the end of words in some registers. Instead of pronouncing a full R or H sound, many people in Brazil just drop the sound altogether. This is a natural phonemic simplification that is also present in many other Romance languages. Languages like French and Catalan notably do not have a word final R. In this case, instead of comer or comer, you would have 
kume. But now that we have an idea of where those R sounds can occur in a word, let's talk a little bit about those R sounds themselves. Now, as I mentioned previously, those hard R sounds all stem from the original R sound or rolled R. This R sound can still be heard in some areas of Portugal, in certain areas of the rural north, as well as around the region of Coimbra. However, in both Portugal and Brazil, that hard R has been replaced by a fricative sound in the back of the mouth. In Portugal, what we have is a heavy R sound that is superficially similar to the R in French. Now, I make mention of French because I would like to dispel the idea that that R in Portuguese came from French itself. There are many popular theories that the R sound in Portugal came from elites imitating French pronunciation or even from Bonk. massive immigration by French people into Portugal at the request of one of the Portuguese kings. Neither of these is true, and the R sound in Portugal derives from certain things that were happening in Portuguese pronunciation in the 1800s. Portuguese in both Portugal and Brazil was undergoing a process of velarization or pronouncing certain sounds sounds further back in the mouth. In this time period in the 1800s, the effect that this had on the R was to take the R sound from the hard palate and begin to make it be pronounced in the back of the mouth as more of an Bonk. uvular trill. That R sound can quickly become a R sound or a more guttural fricative sound. It was indeed the lower or popular classes of the Lisbon area that began speaking like this to such an extent that it became a generalized feature of the Lisbon pronunciation. The accent of Lisbon, it being the capital of the country, was already at this time the prestige accent in Bonk. Portuguese. Traditionally, the prestige accent runs along a corridor stretching from Lisbon to Coimbra, following basically the pattern established by the establishment of the University of Coimbra. But in this case, it was the Lisbon pronunciation that spread far and wide. It was first widely documented in Lisbon in the mid-1800s, but it had already spread in a generalized form across metropolitan Portugal by the beginning of the 20th century. To further debunk the idea that this pronunciation came from the higher classes and spread its way down, as many older speakers in Portugal can attest to, the prestige pronunciation of hard R in Portugal up to the mid 20th century, as recently even as the 70s, was the rolled R sound. For many, many decades in Portugal, students were taught that the correct pronunciation of the hard R was the R sound instead of the R sound that they would naturally speak at home and with friends. That began to shift around the 70s and 80s, and now the R sound is the standard pronunciation. It is the hard R taught to foreign students of European Portuguese, and nowadays school children are not being corrected on their pronunciation of R in school. But I want to go back to French for just a moment. There is a popular theory that R entered Portuguese as the result of French influence by a mass massive wave of immigration of French people to the Portuguese countryside. Now, whether this potentially could have happened centuries ago at the request of a Portuguese king, or even more recently during the Napoleonic invasions of Portugal, the simple fact is that in French, the R sound that they pronounce nowadays was not the widespread pronunciation of R. A rolled R was very common up through the 1800s, even in French. That sound shift in French would occur far too late for any ah. massive French immigration to have an influence on Portuguese pronunciation, setting aside the fact that this massive wave of French immigration to the Portuguese countryside probably did not happen. And certainly there has never been historically a significant enough migration of French people to affect the way that Portuguese itself is spoken. So that's all fine and well when we're talking about Portugal, but there's a lot to cover in Brazil as well. In the mid 1800s, as Portugal was undergoing its own radical sound shifts with regard to R, Brazil was as well. The sound shift of R in Brazil is not directly related to the sound shift of R in Portugal. They simply happened in parallel because of similar things happening in the pronunciation of both variants. So the sound shift of hard R in Brazil is also derived from a process of velarization that would reduce the R sound to the H that we're used to hearing in Brazilian Portuguese nowadays. Depending on the accent of Brazilian Portuguese, you might hear anything ranging from what sounds like an English H or a H 
h sound to a harder h sound. The main difference between the r sound in Portugal and the h sound in Rio de Janeiro is primarily one of voicing. Hard R in Brazil also underwent a process of devoicing. This sound shift in Brazil was also fairly quick and fairly complete. By and large, the rolled R in Brazil had all but disappeared from Brazilian Portuguese by mid-century of the 20th century. By and large, the only people to retain this hard rolled R in Brazilian Portuguese up to this point would be newly arrived immigrants or people from immigrant communities that had retained their language over the years. The rolled R in Brazil also did retain some level of prestige up through the mid 20th century. We can hear this from mass media communication such as radio recordings, music, and even some TV broadcasts. And yet despite that, this rolled R in Brazilian mass communication had a similar role in pronunciation to the transatlantic pronunciation in English. That is to say that it was primarily a media affect, or a special way of pronouncing things for mass communications. In the so-called real world, scarcely few people actually talked with that pronunciation. And so from there in mid century Century Brazil, we get to nowadays where there are no major accents in Brazil that feature a rolled R. But there's just one more R that we're missing out on when we're talking about Brazilian R. That's right, I want to talk briefly about the Caipira R. The Caipira R is a special pronunciation of R, and it is a very uniquely Brazilian pronunciation of the R. The Caipira R is an R that sounds a lot like the English er sound, but in fact it is pronounced a little bit further back in the mouth, and so there are some differences in the way that it is pronounced. It's an er sound that has the tongue raised pretty far back in the mouth to make that er sound. Now when we talk about this er sound in Portuguese, it's important to note the history of how it came about. This er sound derives from indigenous pronunciation. There is some small academic disagreement as to how indigenous pronunciation affected this r and caused it to be pronounced as such. However, this er sound is most likely the result of the lack of a r or er sound in the indigenous languages. Because of this, indigenous people trying to speak Portuguese would compensate for their lack of an r sound, and they would produce an er-like sound that we know today. This extended to the Creole lingua gerais, or the prevalent forms of communication in Brazil up until about the 1800s. When you take a look at Brazilian history, some of the people who propagated and spread the use of the lingua gerais were the bandeirantes. Now, I'm not a historian, so I'm not gonna get too far into who they were specifically, but suffice it to say that they were responsible for the spreading of this caipira r sound, all the way across the interior of Brazil, the way that we know it today. If you want to learn more about the Bandeirantes and who they were and what they did, there is a great channel on YouTube called Buenas Ideas, which is done by Eduardo Bueno, who is a journalist and also an author on Brazilian history. All of that being said, in modern Brazil, the pronunciation of the caipira er sound roughly corresponds to where the Bandeirantes would have primarily been located. This is why the er sound is such a strong feature of the interior of Brazil, which stretches from some parts of Minas Gerais all the way down to the very south. The heaviest concentration of this pronunciation, of course, is in the interior of the state of São Paulo, which also corresponds to the heaviest concentration of Bandeirantes. Now, this er sound in pronunciation can have a bunch of different realizations. Many speakers of a caipira R will pronounce the er sound in pretty much all positions, except for intervocal or R between two vowels. There are some who say it in all positions, including between vowels, and there are some yet still who don't say it between vowels and don't say it at the end of words. So the pronunciation of caipira R is pretty variable, but if you hear somebody in Brazil say bar, don't be taken aback. They're not imitating English. They are actually just speaking in their natural Portuguese. So I think that pretty much sums up R in Portuguese. If you feel that I have missed something or would like to continue talking about it, leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. If there is something else that you'd like to know about in Portuguese, leave me a comment down below or get a hold of me on social media and I would be happy to look into that for future videos. But for now, that's all I've got for R in Portuguese. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you learned something or otherwise found it interesting, leave me a thumbs up down below. If you're not already, you might think about subscribing to my channel. I make a lot of videos about Portuguese, which you can find in playlists directly on my channel or in the eye above, and I will see you next time.